high. So this blueberry is the last survivor of about eight or ten that were planted here in the row. And it might be hard to see, but it's slightly higher in elevation. And the slopes, you know, slopes down that way. Anyway, starting from the lowest part of the yard, there's a little rise right there by the banana and the grapefruit. A lot of water was trapped in here and they started dying close to the banana in succession all the way up here. This one, which is just barely six feet tall, is about 10 or 12 years old. That's a really slow growth rate. And it is on about 12 inches of sandy, loamy soil before you hit red clay. So for this area, it'd be considered very well-drained soil, but when it rains relentlessly in the summer, there's just no drainage, so root rot. And then over here, is how we solve that problem. <clears throat> it's hard what? to see, but there, there is a drainage ditch here on the side. Here. How deep is it? It was originally dug all the way to the clay. Okay. The top 12 inches of sandy loamy topsoil was dug out here and piled up on this mound. And the mound's about five or six feet wide. It was originally two feet high, but now it's settled to about one foot above grade. Mm -hmm. And it's composed of sand, sandy loamy topsoil, charcoal, and pine bark. And there's a drip irrigation line running. And these plants are planted way too close, in my opinion, but. How far would you plant? The, is that a rabbit eye in the big one? It's a mixture of wild species rabbit eyes and southern high bush. And this is actually a fine planting space for southern high bush. The rabbit eye, how many feet is it? Need about six or six feet in a row and about eight feet between a row minimum. Okay. And you can see the drip irrigation line here, but see this three year old plant is actually larger than the twelve year old plant. And it's healthier, doesn't have the lichen on the bark. That's because the bark is growing quickly and being shed. The lichen is a symptom of slow growth, it's not the cause. So anyway, drainage ditch, appropriate width. You can see this plant that's only three years old is already six feet in width. And these tallest branches that are about seven feet, they can fruit this year, but they're gonna be the ones that are pruned back next year. So this entire branch that's reaching up to seven feet, mm -hmm. which comes from this one, and this one. So this will be pruned back next they year? They need to be cut back right down here. Yeah. So you do like a, a pruning training every year after yeah. they, do you do it after the berries are harvested? Yeah. So you would take this and cut it all the way down here? Yeah. It's And if you follow these tall tall stems, it's here. This you just branch. cut back into the harder wood? No, you cut it back down here. Okay. So these two need to come out. Okay. Yeah. What about these? Well, no, those are fine. See, we're at six. Give them another year. Once they get higher than about seven feet, they're not very productive. Oh, okay, so when they get about this height, yeah. you cut them all the way down. Yeah, like you're about six feet tall, right? Right. So, But you gotta be, you know, not uh, not six feet from the ground, six feet from where it grows. So, you know, this is fine, that's too high. Okay. After it makes fruit, it got, it's got to go. Cool. So, okay. so that's how you would make this bush produce as much? That's how, you, that's how you maintain it. Okay. Yeah. Because if it gets too tall, it's just going to be, what, making just leaves and stuff? If it, it gets past this? It, it, um, once it gets past about six or seven feet, they only produce about two-thirds as many berries as they do below six or seven feet. Okay. So they're inefficient at production. So what they, kind is this one right here, John? That's another rabbit eye, and it's way too close. This one over here is a southern high bush. So high bush. Yeah. Then you, you got did another, a little different looking. That's another rabbit eye. And this and is then, what a... That looks like a, what they call the myrtle leaf blueberry. It has so, little small berries? It, yeah, it's a wild type. That's the one they actually use in the little muffins, don't they? They use low bush from up north. Oh, okay. Yeah. But this is as close as we get to... I mean, they're not low here, but they have little flavor packed berries. We can use. Yeah, I remember trying what was so good. I'm pretty sure they call that the myrtle leaf blueberry. Mm -hmm. And so you can see the ones that are leafed out more, like that. that's another high bush, but look how close it is, like one foot apart from the adjacent rabbit. That's ridiculous. I don't know why anybody did that. But you do see the charcoal. So, 
charcoal is important because charcoal doesn't biodegrade. <clears throat> so it builds a permanent topsoil eventually. Mm -hmm. And uh, just for information, pan around the yard. Got vannas, guavas, mushroom logs, citrus, vegetable garden, pear, fig, banana, pawpaw, star fruit, mangoes. So this one was actually touching the frost cloth. So that the tree itself was supporting it. And that's fine because you see not every bud was touching the frost cloth. But I would prefer to have a frame to support it. So you don't have this. Probably like what, three inches above it, four? Yeah. Really. Something yeah. that just stays off the, yeah. the limbs and the leaves. But you it, see a lot of the flowers did make it through. And many of the buds out. are just now opening because we actually kept it cool. That's good. Which helped to delay its flowering. If you keep it too warm, it thinks it's spring. Yeah, if you keep if you have it in too hot of a house, it'll bloom out way too early. Bloom at the wrong time. So later blooming varieties are better up north. Still looks like you're gonna get. Oh yeah. A good bit of fruit this year. Last year it got hit too bad, didn't it? Was that why the fruits didn't Actually, take? It was so moist it that it made it made some flower clusters, but they all rotted. Which makes me think we need to. You have to spray. Yeah, put out some of that copper friendly fungicide. Some copper. We got a little insect walking around. There's a here's the one that John's been training to make it produce much, lots of flowers, fruits by pulling it down. See? Lots triggers it to want to make fruits. Lots of fruits in February. You can see he's got they got the bulbs. Keep it warm in the winter. And they have a cloth they put over it. But now it's warming up. But see, this would if you had a few trees like this, you could produce lots of fruits throughout the year. Look how much one gives after about what five years. And they, they grow quicker than that if you take care of them. This one's been abused. It's been frozen. It's been chewed on by dogs. <laughs> so many enemies. But it still wants to survive. Alrighty. Thank you, John.